the Ronald Reagan Library, the National Archives, Constitutional Amendments, Amendment 16, Income Taxes. Puck, political cartoon, satirizing Theodore Roosevelt passing his presidential policies to William Howard Taft as the next president. Taft would continue to advance Roosevelt's progressive angle to political decision making including income taxes and the future 16th amendment 1909 public domain see look here what are they passing there do you see how the cartoon they're passing the baby yes i own your babies now I own you babies. Now you just take my policy and be my maid and be a good boy. And do like what I was told to do. Now you're in the White House. You're a made man. And you just do what Mr. Rothschild says. What Mr. Rockefeller wants and you'll be alright. Now. Amendment 16 to the Constitution was ratified on February 3rd, 1913. It grants Congress the authority to issue an income tax without having to determine it based on population. The official text is written as such. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived it doesn't matter the source that's why they can tax everything without apportionment among the several states it means the states the states have no say so in this and without regard to any census or enumeration it means that they can tax what they want to tax. Don't matter how many people there are. We the people might as well be written on toilet paper. And because we're wiping our ass with it. And we're turning this into a monarchy, guys. This is when this happened, okay? In the, Do you see that? I want you to read that. That would really piss you off. The Congress shall have power to lay, to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without apportionment among the several states. So they took the power from the states. Okay? With and without regard to any census or enumeration. You understand? It doesn't matter how many people there are. What we the people say doesn't matter anymore. We the Congress branch now have taken that power inside the federal government. Because we serve the Pharaoh Rothschild. Good Lord. So... In the Constitution's original writing, the taxing clause in Article One grants the grants Congress the general authority to lay and collect taxes, duties, imports, and ex excise excesses. Excesses, guys, means excessive, heavy taxing for direct taxes article one commands that they must be collected based on the population of the united states do you see do you see it does not matter about we the people no more it's not we the people it's we the federal government and our king big daddy jacob rothschild big pimp big pimpin big pimp because he's pimped out all these countries with his banks and his money changers. And that's why God's mad. You understand? Before an income tax was established, 
The majority of funds given to the federal government derive from tariffs on domestic and international goods. Now, who was all about tariffs? Donald J. Trump, because he can't be bought, and that's why they hate him. Okay? The Short-Lived Revenue Act of 1861 predated the 16th Amendment as the first official federal income tax, but it was eventually repealed in 1872 because they were like, oh my God, that was stupid. The end of the 19th century saw the beginning of the Progressive Era, a time period in which political and social reform centered on industry, voting, immigration, and several other topical issues of the time period. And yes, those issues were important. Do you understand why they did it during this era? They done all that good stuff during this era so they could do all this evil shit under it. It was a good thing that that happened, but they operated like Satan operates. Okay? Truth and lies. He is a liar, a stealer, a killer, and a murderer. Anyway. So, a time period in which blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, and several other topical issues at the time period. Levying a federal income tax became a key goal for many progressive groups. The key argument, so I can keep my place here. The key argument being that it was fair for the wealthy individuals to pay taxes and tariffs that had largely been obliged from the middle class and the poor in society. Okay? You see how they make that sound all good? Well, it's not good because they stole your power and they can delay uh, excess taxes. Do you see? Ex that's how they do excess taxes. That's why they can take half of your income, guys. Trump is coming back to finish the job. He understands how to do it. The Lord told me he would put his man in office. And by God, he will. I swear by the Lord God Almighty, the holy name of Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you now another thing. I swear by the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ, that the Lord told me to tell you this, Mr. Rothschild. Let my people go. You best not harden your heart like Pharaoh did or you're going to lose your firstborn, your favorite. He will die. I swear by the holy God, Jesus Christ. The Alpha and the Omega. Congress passed the Wilson, the, the, in 18, the 1894 Wilson-Gorman Tariff Act, which contained an... an which contained an income tax provision of 2% of incomes over 4000 equivalent to about 136000 in 2022. Supporters of this new income tax argued that it was not specifically a direct tax. Okay, this is why things cost so much. Do you see how the inflation went over time? Because this is around the same time we're talking about the Federal Reserve coming in and all that, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to show you guys that don't understand that next, too. The money changers run the countries, okay? And that's why Jacob Rothschild lives like a king, y'all. He is the monarch. Two previous Supreme Court uh, decisions supported these. But in the 5-4 decision in 1895's Pollock vs. the Farmers Loan and Trust Company ruled that the Income Tax Act was a direct tax. The core argument was that the income tax in the act was sourced from deriving income from an individual's property. Based on this, 
The court asserted that the direct taxes included in any sort of income tax on rents, dividends, and interest, therefore making them legally required to be apportioned among the states. The states, guys. You're supposed to pay a tax, an income tax to your state. 14 years after the Pollock decision, Taft proposed Congress a new income tax of 2% on corporations. This would be imposed by an excess tax on manufactured goods and an amendment to the Constitution to legally sanction the most recent federal income tax. Okay, excess tax on manufactured goods. This is why everything costs so much. This is why you cannot afford to live. Because they took your power, your wealth, and your freedom. They took it, centralized it for the wealthy. Do you understand the language in this article? Centralized wealthy power. It is not a democratic constitution. It does not matter. This is a minor, uh, and what I would call it would be a neo-monarchical democratic socialist society that would be what we have guys okay so several senators proposed different versions of the new amendment throughout 1909 many citizens living in the west and the south supported the income tax off the grounds that it would be easier to raise funds for those who were well were, were less were let you know were unfortunate Several key Republicans, including former, former, uh, you know, Theodore Roosevelt, carry a big stick guy, began to believe that the new amendment income tax would be good to help finance the United States, increasing political and military power. Political and military power. Again, again. These insurgent Republicans, many of them who would go on to create the Bull Moose Party, stood in opposition to the establishment Republicans in Congress. Their opposition to the new amendment was largely rooted in their connections to major businesses at the time period, while the others argued that the income tax would make the federal government more powerful and more centralized. The rise of the Progressive Party and the victory of the Democratic Party in 1912, the presidential election, allowed for an easier ratification of the new amendment. From 09 to 13, the new amendment was ratified by the required 36 states out of the 40 then on February 3rd. 1913, just one month before the inauguration of Woodrow Wilson. The 16th Amendment was formally accepted into the Constitution with the income tax provision outlined in the new amendment of the Revenue Act of 1913 was soon after enacted into law by Congress because they stole the power. The most significant long-term impact of the 16th Amendment was the shift in the way the federal government received funding for its works was originally received as a system that depended largely on tariffs. More Donald Trump again, just at a, at a level just slightly above many of the states, transformed into a more powerful centralized institution that source vast quantities of funding through many incomes of individuals and the states. Do you see that? Do you understand the verbiage and the wordage here? They took the power from us 
in our states saying, oh, we'll help the less fortunate. Well, let me tell you what they do to you as a less fortunate person. You know what SSI is good for? It's a bunch of shit. They don't give you enough money to live on. You have to struggle. You have to go to the store. Embarrassed with food stamps. Embarrassed. And they can take it from you at any time. That's how excessive it is. They were, and now they want to take all that. And they're taking people's money and stripping all that away from them. You know, now too. They want, they want all the money, guys. The money, love of money is the root of all evil. And there's a big old root. And its name is the Federal Reserve, the 16th and 17th Amendments. And Jacob Rothschild and the Rockefeller family. Now, that's what I wanted to say.